Hello, friends. Rich Carlson here, and I welcome you all to the Partner Technical Success Channel. At Microsoft, we value our coveted partners and the innovative services and solutions that you bring to market. Today, we'll be discussing Azure Virtual Desktop, architectural planning, and strategies. Firstly, I would like to quickly introduce Aaron McKay. Aaron is a cloud solutions architect on the Global Partner Solutions tech team, specializing on Windows Virtual Desktop. On that note, let's jump right in. Take it away, Aaron. Thanks, Rich. Now we'll look at the reference architecture in an enterprise scale use case. So one of the things I really want to point out from this uh, diagram is how we can have multiple subscriptions and do VNet peerings through a hub and spoke network. And this is one example that we have for an environment that's using Azure Virtual Desktop and the key components are all visible here, but we'll jump right in and, and show out show out the different scenarios and the different components. One of the recommended examples is uh, for a cloud-based setup. So everything that happens in Azure Active Directory is actually automated automatically replicated to the domain controller in a cloud-based model. For users to join their uh, join their identities, they can load them all into the Azure Active Directory domain services, Windows Server Active Directory, which runs in Azure. So this allows virtual machines to be domain joined uh, within Azure Active Directory. And we do this as a service, but there's other options as well. Another option would be for hybrid organizations, which uh, for, for me, I've seen so many partners and and other organizations use the hybrid model where they have Azure Active Directory, but they also need to sync their Windows Server Active Directory that's on premises to Azure. And so you can do this through Azure Active Directory Connect, which synchronizes these identities, and you can use a express, express route or a site-to-site -site VPN or virtual, network, uh, virtual private network to Azure. Switching over to the storage architecture, FSLogix profiles is something key that we've differ differentiated with Azure Virtual Desktop. And now that it's completely integrated into Azure Virtual Desktop, you can just add in your, your profiles and also have them uh, handled by Azure NetApp files or just simply in Azure files. So the FS Logics profiles essentially hold all of your user data, the user's wallpaper, their environment, what their, you know, all their different uh, backgrounds and and things that make it feel real for them that it's a real desktop, personal desktop, and personalized in a pool environment. So for storage, some of the things to keep in mind is that you have Azure Net Files, Azure NetApp Files, and Storage Spaces Direct. There's different uh, use cases for the different uh, files and features. So you want to keep in mind uh, this specific uh, diagram, and we'll have a link provided here for looking into which one will be right for you. And so moving forward to networking, let's look at how uh, the reverse connect works. And essentially with reverse connect, the Azure Active Directory is authenticating the user and returning a token so that it can go from uh, where the user's uh, public internet is all the way through to the session host. And the broker that's within the Windows Virtual Desktop, formerly known as Windows Virtual Desktop, is now Azure Des Virtual Desktop. The gateway and broker all handle that communication from the client to the session host. For the reference architecture, the, the networking components are uh, primarily site-to-site -site VPN or express route, as we mentioned earlier. But then there's also different app dependencies that you want to think about, as well as uh, the DNS, which can be uh, managed with Azure Front Door. But also be careful with uh, the complex DNS forwarding to ensure that the lowest latency is, is available for those users. Some things to keep in mind as well in terms of networking are the required URLs that are accessible for 
that are needed and accessible for Azure Virtual Desktop. And so we have in Microsoft Docs a list of those that we'll also share out. And then bandwidth. Bandwidth is key. I mean, the last thing you want is the uh, the network not working, or uh, you're going to have latency or or delays in terms of uh, the user experience. So one things to one thing to test that experience is the Azure Virtual Desktop Experience Estimator, and there's a link provided here where you can go straight to the estimator from where you are, and it'll tell you the round trip time to a specific Azure Azure region. So for me, being in the West US region. I would probably be the fastest would be West US one or two. So uh, those are some key things to think about. And then also the remote desktop protocol bandwidth uh, requirements. Those are something to keep in mind as well, which we recommend round trip time to be less than 150 milliseconds for a good service. Some other things to think about are subscription limits. And here we see the different uh, limitations for um, for a, a good uh, Azure Virtual Desktop deployment. There are some that are just recommendations, some that are just the product limitations. So for example, uh, one of the product limitations are uh, 399 sessions per host for an ARM template. Um, this is just one of the things that we have set so that there's uh, there's no performance delays or crashes uh, that may that may may occur, which uh, uh, that's just kind of in the product mix. So the we also have 5,000 VMs per subscription to avoid getting uh, close to uh, that limit because you may have some user sessions that um, that may slow down if it gets to over 5,000 VMs. Lastly, we're going to discuss sizing and performance. And in terms of virtual machine sizing, we have uh, these recommendations for, for virtual machine sizing. We have uh, light users, medium users, and heavy and power users. And so I will briefly touch on each of those. So a light user would be someone who doesn't need that much uh, power in their, in their machine. They may work on maybe Word, uh, Excel, uh, a few different uh, applications, but nothing really compute intensive. A medium user, as you can, you know, guess, it's probably just you know a medium about a, amount of load. A heavy user would probably be uh, someone who does different machine learning models. Uh, power power user would be someone who needs GPU capability, uh, maybe uh, mining or something more compute intensive. So for single sessions, that was for multi session. For single sessions, we recommend that you have two physical CPU cores per VM, and this is uh, you know typically for. Uh, we recommend four vCPUs with hyperthreading. Um, and for as in terms of RAM, the standard is eight gigs for virtual environments, but you can go above that. Some sizing tools, the pricing calculator, as well as the Azure Virtual Desktop Solution Configurator uh, Excel workbook. Uh, these are things that we recommend asking your uh, your partner manager or um, your Microsoft uh, account manager about. For, but you can use the Azure Pricing Calculator, which may be the uh, the quickest way to uh, guesstimate your your sizing, and as well as your pricing. For sizing and performance guidance, there's no magic bullet for accurate sizing. All the production environment uh, de deployments should include uh, adequate user acceptance testing, and uh, some common VM series for Azure Virtual Desktop are D, F, and NV. So as we you know go up the stack of of the this, the amount of power and memory that these uh, machines have, um, you're looking at D D series for uh, mostly for mostly uh, medium light and uh, medium light users, and then NV for series for uh, heavy and power users, and you can also look at Teams audiovisual redirection here at this link, and uh, we do have third-party tools available. Definitely recommend looking into our, uh, our partner list for third-party tools in terms of management, monitoring, and that's a great segue to our next session on monitoring. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Aaron, very much for the insightful introduction into the Azure Virtual Desktop architectural planning and strategies. 
And I thank all the Microsoft partners out there for viewing this informative episode. Look for many more informative technical episodes to come on the Microsoft Partner Technical Success Channel. Thank you.